Hello all. Last Monday morning I had three wisdom teeth removed and it took me a little more to recover than I thought. Just so you know, I was never in any real pain, but any time you have surgery like that, it takes some time for the body to heal itself. More than that, the healing process itself requires energy, energy that makes you feel more tired than usual as the body works hard to heal. So I decided the prudent thing to do was to lay low and to do as little as possible so the healing process wouldn't drag out for any longer than necessary. But I'm back and I'm ready to go. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, July 1st, 2024. Last Monday, I began talking about the second of H. Richard Niebuhr's types of Christian strategies for navigating what he calls the enduring problem, the problem of how to navigate the gap between our loyalty to Jesus Christ and the many loyalties we have in our cultures. Yesterday, one of you shared with me a slogan you saw on another church's marquee. It said something like, we don't need to get the Bible out of culture, we need to get the culture out of the Bible. It's just one more reminder that the Christ and culture question is, as Niebuhr claims, an enduring problem. Now, recall that the first of Richard Niebuhr's types he calls the Christ against culture type. I suspect many churches may think of themselves as this type, but they're mostly not. Christ against culture means Christ against culture of any sort. It means withdrawing from culture and rejecting culture in all its forms. My hunch is that the folks who think they're of the against culture type really mean they just don't like certain parts of this culture, but they strongly believe in the importance of a certain set of cultural values, it's just a different culture. Niebuhr's second type is the opposite end of the spectrum, so to speak. For this type, the Christ of culture, Contemporary culture is generally good. It may have its flaws, but underneath it all, it is a good thing. For folks of this type, the enduring problem is solved by thinking of Jesus Christ in a very different way from the against culture types who think of Christ as the sovereign king of a new and totally separate humanity and who gives a new law to be followed to the letter, a law that, if anything, is even more stringent than that which is found, for example, in the Old Testament. No, the Christ of culture, Jesus, is the man who represents the best and highest of human culture. Not in the sense that he's what you might call cultured. He's not the refined, urbane man of arts and letters. Jesus is the man who shows us the best and highest of what human culture look like, looks like and what human life looks like in that culture. Now. Like his analysis of each of the other types of Christianity, Niebuhr explores at least four tensions or polar polarities, theological issues that can be answered in different ways. It is how each type of Christianity addresses each of these, pro these polarities that distinguishes them from each other. Maybe the most critical of these polarities, especially for distinguishing between the Christ against and the Christ of culture types, is the question of what professional philosophers and theologians call epistemology, the question of how we know what we know. The Christ against culture type sees scripture as the one and only source of knowledge and insight about Christian faith and life, not just the highest and best source, but the only source. Indeed, this type tends to distrust all other sources of knowledge for much of anything. Science, literature, philosophy, all of these are suspect from the beginning, not just for Christian life, but for all of life. By contrast, the Christ of culture type sees the Bible as one source among others for knowledge about Christian faith and life. It's not that the Bible isn't authoritative. It's that the Bible may be judged against the best and highest insights of culture. One example will do here. The Bible talks about slavery in both the Old and New Testaments simply as part of the way the world works. It seems to be a, one of a number of social institutions that seem quite foreign to us. For the strict follower of the Bible, though, 
This represents and presents a real problem. Are you really going to accept the noxious institution of slavery? The Christ of culture type says, absolutely not. This is one place where what we find in the Bible can and even must be judged against more modern beliefs and mores. So for this type, knowledge for virtuous living can and does come from a variety of sources, including the Bible, but not from the Bible alone. Where the Bible is seen as out of touch with contemporary thinking, and it doesn't matter what period of history you're talking about for contemporary thinking, then the Bible may be read in light of the best and highest cultural values of the time. This may sound radical, but it is a lot more common than you might think. So-called conservative Christians are as apt to think this way as so-called liberal Christians. They differ only on which cultural model they prefer and therefore which cultural values they bring to the fore. But both tend to read the Bible and interpret it in light of a set of culturally based values. Practically no one, neither liberals nor conservatives, would say, say that this is what they believe, but it is what they actually do. Let me close with an example. There is a church I see sometimes when I drive around Tyler called the Patriot Church. Without ever having met them, I think I can reasonably predict what their beliefs are. They are very likely to equate Christian faith with American patriotism. And while they believe that American values are Christian values, the truth is that they almost certainly read the Bible in the light of a sort of hyper-patriotism in which Christ represents the best and highest American ideals. But call them examples of Christ of culture? and I'll bet you'd have a fight on your hands. So tomorrow, we'll look at two of other, two other of Niebuhr's polarities and where the Christ of culture type lands on the spectrum of each. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.